Scene 3.57. Hey y'all, Artist Poet Girl here, also known as APG Jamie. And today, let's make this hard journal cover. Okay? Uh, I recently took a um, natural dyes and binding class workshop through my local art league with uh, Delaney Smith. Link below in the description box along with a list of ingredients. And to make uh, this cover for some of the papers uh, that I dyed in, in the workshop. That's what this journal covers for in a roundabout way, okay? I used um, corrugated board and I cut, this is my spine. The first two was the front and back cover. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> Anesthesia results, lingering effects. And I cut my spine too, too wide there. I made it like half an inch and really, you know, that's like too wide. <sighs> the pamphlet stitched the dyed papers, which you'll eventually see probably should have stopped, showed those to you first but anyway I decided I wanted to decorate the front cover a little bit and I used this uh, square die set to make uh, like a little frame and it didn't cut all the way through my corrugated board so I'm trimming it out with the craft knife let's see what else yep that's that's what I'm doing <laughs> Oh, be sure to keep putting those lids back on your craft knives, okay? You don't want to cut yourself or accidentally poke yourself when you're swiping across your desk to, you know, get the dust crumbs off. And that's some um, Aileen's Turbo Tech Glue. I'm liking that stuff. And yeah, I could have used a smaller brush, but why bother when I had this tiny one so handy? And using the bone folder to just fold up a little bit of that uh, cr uh scrapbook paper and it is just a uh, thin scrapbook paper it's not even uh, the thick or sort of card stocky ish one this is the first time I've made a hard journal cover like this so yeah I really don't know what I'm doing yes I have watched many videos I did not watch any prior to making this because you know I thought I had totally learned by osmosis huh yeah, I almost did. Almost, almost, yeah, almost is good enough. You know, I'm not making a um, a journal to sell or even to give away as a gift. You know, this is just, you know, to show off my fancy dyed papers, okay? So, uh, don't be disappointed in me, Delaney. <laughs> Oh goodness so I'm rolling down you saw me gluing uh, and putting the glue on the cardboard because it's more uh, absorbent than the um, paper there I did not cut my corners I did not leave enough space on my corners obviously which we're all fixing to see I did sort of fix it okay yeah so I mean you know it's still fixable and I'm sure a better person would have started all over but you know Hey, I move on with my mistakes as they are, such as they are. They only add to uh, the character of this handmade hard journal cover. Uh, so my, that's my reasoning, and I'm sticking to in it. Sticking to in it. <laughs> so you see, I glued uh, bits of those corners that I cut off on the inside, so you couldn't see the cardboard. And in the end, it wouldn't have mattered anyway because I ended up covering sort of all that up anyhow. And yeah, I'm just putting gluing, gluing my edges up, and using my bone folder to help ease the paper up. And remember when paper. Uh, and cardstock likewise gets wet it will be somewhat stretchy so use a little care all right people a little care now at some point oh no not yet I didn't I didn't stick it underneath heavy um, heavy books until I stick my uh, signature in there which is just one signature and it has a lot of papers in it and it's pamphlet stitch like I said, my spine is way too, way too wide. See, there's the papers. Can you see them? I had uh, scrunched them up first, and this is um, 300 pound cotton paper. 
and the the there's a second paper in there. Someone had brought some uh, fairly heavyweight tracing paper, and I scrunched them both up, kind of wadded them up, not totally, just kind of, and then I dyed them. And I was happy with the results. So there I was measuring because I've decided I'm just going to have to cover that whole inside because my signature end papers are not long enough to be end papers because, you know, technically they aren't really end papers. So I thought, I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, I'm happy with my result. I feel like I accomplished what I set out to accomplish, which was to make a hard cover binding for my uh, pamphlet stitch natural dyed papers. Okay? Make sure your edges are glued down because that's important because, you know, <laughs> I end up covering up all that stuff anyhow. Sort of ish. Hey, again, y'all. <laughs> and I'm basically just surface drawing. And uh, so there's the cover. I'm really happy with it. I am. Looks really good here. If I'd have stopped, I'd have been good to go. And now I'm gluing in my signature. And uh, that is uh, the first layer there is the tracing paper. So it's kind of weird to glue. Not like vellum, though, I'll tell you. It's not near as translucent as vellum either. But so anyway, yeah, because vellum really warps and stuff. So I'm going to glue all on there. Now I'm going to try to center it, and I didn't do a great job of that. And then I smoosh it all down with, you know, my little wooden roller. And now I'm going to use a bone folder and put glue where it needs more glue. And then I open it up to, to the middle. And also I put uh, a couple of pieces of uh, baking parchment paper on the glued sides there. And then I smash it under a book for a couple few days or however long it was. I don't remember because I ended up, you know, having that kidney stone that we should not mention. Um, and probably on the day you're watching this video is probably the day that I'll be having my uh, my stent removed and my stone blasted. So anyway, back to the journal. I decided to cover my um, my frame thing for the cover with uh, this washi tape. It matched the colors of the paper, so I mean, you know. I said, yeah, and it really wasn't wide enough, but you know, I'm making it work. All right, people, I made it work for me. It was probably harder than it needed to be, and but you know, sometimes I'm not known to do things the easy way. Okay, y'all really want to know how to do this kind of book covering, journal making, covering stuff? Yeah, consider me a beginner on this stuff here so yeah and then my edge tried to crack so I thought well I'll just put washi tape on that too and I could have should have just left it at the two pieces but I put the third one in there there's a whole lot of things I could have should have done but I didn't okay but I'm still happy in the end and that's what matters right right so uh not a total failure because it made me happy all right and I like the process I'm going to wrap this around because, I, you know, my corners were already boogered up. Yeah, I'm trying to cover up the booger, and it's just not quite working. So put a little on the inside and trim it up. Then wrap the corner, and it's still, you know, yeah. I know you people that have done this before out there. I can just practically hear you hollering right now. All right. And so it goes. Musical, musical, musical interlude. It's just a musical interlude for you, for me, just we. Musical interlude. And I chose to put uh, two rows of the washi tape there on the inside against the edge because, you know, why not? Overkill. So I did, and... Uh, Went over the whole thing on the inside with matte medium, and I'm going to show you the matte medium on the outside because you definitely want to seal your washi tape down because, you know, it's washi tape and it's not, you know, a permanent kind of tape. It will turn loose, and here I'm gluing on my fancy little frame. In my head, I had the letter J in a um, 
a metal charm that I couldn't find it. Okay? And, uh, yeah, this was, you know, I finished this up after, after the ER. Not immediately after, you know, a couple days, you know. So, anyway, it wasn't heavy work. Anyway, I couldn't find my metal charm, so I may do with a die cut letter, and I don't know what die cut it was because it was some I had borrowed from the art league and cut out some stuff, and that was that. And it was in on some color piece of cardstock, and I had to paint it dark green. Oh, I didn't have to paint it dark green. I chose to paint it dark green, okay? And I put some um, pop dots underneath there to pop it up. And see all that space? Now, technically, if you're doing a journal that you're going to be journaling, uh, adding paint, papers, you know, tip-ins, tip-outs, that kind of thing, too, you want a wider spine to allow for uh, fluffiness. But in this case, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with the pages in this journal. So, yeah, I could have made my spine just a little more narrower. Just a little. So, that's wrapping up the photo montage, and we're going to get into the closing credits. Please be sure to check out the link below to Delaney Smith Studio. She was such a fun chica. I went on my blog. I've got a uh, post, too, on my blog. So, link below. And uh, thanks for watching. And happy arting, y'all.